take no Big Beach. We're here. I bet now it's different this time. So, again, uh, we're recording this during the game. That's how bad things are. The uh, Knicks I'm are sipping wine. Back. I'm sipping wine so I can try to relax and try to enjoy the game a little bit by watching this enjoy. amazing team. Wow. <laughs> They're not even... This is the thing. I'm watching DJ Wilson. It's 4 for 5 right now. These guys are bums. Every game... Yo, since bums. when did Yanis start scoring threes? Well, since he played the Knicks. How's that? Here's the thing. I, wow. I the Knicks games have become tryouts for guys to try new things they have been working on. Ben Simmons, who's never hit a three ever in NBA history, it's his first three against the Knicks. Giannis, he's been shooting it more this season, but you saw what he did tonight. Right now, it is a dumpster fire. This, I, I, fizz there, it's, it's it, that's it. I'm sorry, that's it. That's it. It boils down to this for me. I, and we've heard all the arguments on both sides, but it boils down to this for me at this point. Everyone in the NBA is a certain level. When a team is losing like this, it's, it's not, not the players. It's not the. I've been, but I've been saying that. I've been saying that. Yeah. This is this, yeah. is an, this is a super elite sport. Every person that's playing in the American NBA, and to be honest, even in a lot of the European countries, they are elite players, especially here. So to me, at this point, and I said this in our last video, these guys can all play the game. It's up to you to coach them on what on on honing in on their skills, whatever their real skills are. There and having them play with the team in a way that's cohesive so it works. It's like you have to be the person putting the pieces in the correct place and telling them how to play in order to optimize scoring, blocking, you shooting can't the three, rebounding, everything, free throws, yeah. getting your rebounds like all of these things that are part of the basketball game. You, as the coach, are supposed to see where your play is going to shine. And then, and then have him work in that position. And I, I said that a long time ago from when we first started the season. I said that Fisdale doesn't seem to be doing any coaching. It's like a free-for-all. It's like, just do whatever you want and I'll figure it out. And maybe that was his approach. And well, we were trying to figure out, well, was that his approach in the beginning? And he's going to see how these guys play. And no, what the F are you doing? You know what pisses me off about him actually right now? I am not seeing him being vocal or emotional about anything. It's like he's done. He's checked out mentally. He maybe, maybe he is. Checked out mentally. He put, might be getting fired tonight. So, uh, you know what I mean? You don't know. What I'll say is on your point, your last point, uh, Coach Bud, Mike Budenholzer, who, you, if you remember, it was between him and Fisdale for the job. But we'll talk about that another day. Um, he is screaming at Giannis for missing a simple defensive play. They're up 30-something, and he's screaming at him, right? Fisdale, on the other hand, at the end of the third quarter, is laughing it up at Bobby Portis after you miss another, sh another shot. I'm going to put that on the screen now for you to see. <laughs> the, it's a point where these players are not this bad, and when the players are looking this bad this consistently, and almost everyone is looking worse than last season. We, last season, this is crazy. We were 7-14 and 14 with a way worse team. Right. This team had $70 million to spend, spent the money, got a number three overall pick, added them to the guys from last year they wanted to keep, and ended up right now, they're about to be 4-17. and 17. So after 21 games, we're three games worse than last season. You, that just, you know, all that tells me you know, is there's I, no progression, there's nothing going on. Right. And I, I, I actually feel... Say again? I'm sorry. I'm, I know I'm, I'm talking over you. I know. Yeah. I know. I realize I'm doing that, folks. I'm talking over yeah, you. What, what are you saying? Go. I was saying that I actually feel sorry for these guys. Yep. I, I, you know how I feel? I have this elite group and I send them to the wrong school. <laughs> and the school what? I send them to is all about academics. And they know this school I send them to knows nothing about athleticism. And all they know about is academics. And that's the school they went to. So they're, they're kind of like, oh, like, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do with this? Because they have, they have, this, they have it. They yeah. don't know what to do. know what to do with it. Yeah, I mean, they they're not. They're, they wouldn't know what to do with it. These are all young, young guys. And, and they're not good. You know, don't get it twisted, guys, in the comments. They're not a good team, all right? But they're not oh, this oh, bad. Oh, yes, we That's my really main know that we are not they're a good team. Bad. These guys, like, not just like you know, correct them, 
there's no sense of accountability or like reprimanding. Mitch is still allowed to do whatever he wants out there, collecting stupid fouls. And it seems like no one's really drilling into him. And what's really scary when you think about that is Mitch only really improved on the fouls when DeAndre was there. I was just going to say, DeAndre was, only, was, mentor, was mentoring. Him. It was only that period. Like that period, he looked like the Mitch we thought we were going to see this year. And then he left and he thought, okay, maybe he improved anyway. But now that DJ is right. not here, you're but not seeing was, any of that carryover. So, which, okay, which goes exactly to my point that these guys need the right teachers. Yeah. Mitchell improved for that short period of time that DeAndre was here, right? Short, short. short period of time. And we started to see improvement right away. Clearly, DeAndre was talking to him, telling him what to do, how to use his body, how not to get in foul trouble. Clearly, that was happening because Fisdale certainly wasn't doing it. Right. And you know what sucks? I know Fisdale is going to come to the press conference tonight and say, oh man, we played a beast team. That Giannis guy. He's so good. He's done this so often. But to me, it's not even about losing. It's going back to last year. Last year, we asked for an entire season, what is the system? We didn't see it. The whole thing was, okay, we have free agency coming up. It's all going to make sense now. Well, nothing happened in free agency that we really wanted. So we end up with this, which is not this bad. And I will keep saying that. This is not a four-win team right now. This may be like a seven-win team or an eight-win team, but this is not a four-win team. And we know the free throws, blah, blah, blah. But you cannot tell me after a hundred and what, two or three games right now, David Fisdale, he has the worst record, by the way, in Knicks history for a coach after this time. And oh, a lot. Oh, is that what we're hitting? We're, we're, that's what we're hitting? Worst records? We're hitting well, the worst well, records listen, for everything? Is that what we're doing? We're on pace right now to win 16 games next year, which would be lower than last season when we actively tanked late. You cannot tell me, looking at this team, that you're seeing building blocks in terms of cohesion and, and teamwork and all that stuff. You're seeing individual guys shine. Like you've seen Frank show some improvement. You've seen RJ has some moments. But you're not really seeing anything consistent. Kevin Knox looks so much worse than last year at times. And it just feels like, look, Fizz may have the right ideas. Maybe We don't know what's going on. So maybe Fizz has an idea of how he wants them to play and he's upset that they're not doing it. But to me, a second part of coaching that people have to remember they want to blame the players. If a coach has the right idea, but the players don't do it, that's on the coach. It's not their... Like, a good coach, the point of being a coach is you're supposed to be able to get through to them too. It's not just that you have it. Having it is just a theory, right? I'm sure... Listen, there are guys at home on their couch right now who know the shit about... Who probably coach the shit out of the team. Wait, hold on. Hold, have on. To, uh, hold on. I think this is Becky on the line. Hey, Becky, we're looking <laughs> for a coach. What's up? We'd love to have the person uh, coach. We love that you're under pop. And this would be amazing for New York. <laughs> no, but this is my thing. This is, this is really what I'm going to. If a coach cannot get through, the, I'd rather have a worse coach that can get through the players than mm -hmm. a good coach that can't get through. So even if your argument is that Fizz is, ha is, Fizz is telling them what to do, but the guys are young and they're messing up. I'm right. like, well, then that means he's not the right person to get through to them. Because I don't think we have a bunch of idiots on this team. All our guys want to, all our kids are hardworking. You know, they have good attitudes for the most they part. Are. They our are. kids I, that I are... Yeah, they're not these kind of guys. So when you see this and you see guys making these dumb mistakes, simple, simple basketball mistakes, and nothing's being rectified, not to mention, if I went back in the, to the tapes to show you the kind of bullshit we saw late in games out of timeouts, like we have timeouts when they're supposed to come up with a play and we look worse coming out of the timeout on the play that Fisdale drew. I want to give him patience, but the, the problem is right now, the best argument for Fisdale is literally oh, the Knicks always fire their coach. That's the only argument. There's no positive on him. It's more like, well, the Knicks do that all the time. But at this point, this team, it's right now, it's probably going to finish like this, close to this. It's 132-85. Well, no, I, I thought it was going to be a 50-point game. I called. Oh my and, here, and here's the thing. I don't even care that it's a 50-point game. I don't even care that it's a blowout game. You know what I care about? I'm not seeing the guys putting in any effort. And, and, I, and I still don't think it's their fault. It's not like, them. Because at this point, at this point, right, with a fifty-point, well, with the, when, the game, when we knew yeah. it was going to be a blowout game, to me that they should almost be coming in playing so much freer because it's like, okay, we already know Milwaukee's a great team and they're probably going to win, so let's just play, let's just play ourselves, let's, let's, let's just have a good time. And I didn't even see that. I didn't, I didn't see any new plays. I didn't see. I saw the same shit. I saw Isozo with his with his um, ISO ball. I saw Rat. Well. Actually, to be honest, the one player that maybe stepped up a little bit so far has been Randall. Well, he's been he's been a little bit better, but still, Lots he's not in a position to succeed. Better. But he's not in a position to succeed. 
You can see Randall had a career last year looking great. Comes out this year and he sucks. And I'm like, uh, you know, while he's to blame for a lot of it, he's not a high IQ guy. He makes a really a lot of really bad mistakes. You can still see that Phil Zay is not putting him in a position to succeed. And it boils down to this. Even the Frank stuff, Frank, you know, Frank is kind of playing well this year. We're seeing a change in him. If you really think about it, Fizdale was forced to play him. He didn't want to. He had to play him after Alfred got injured and DJ had his stepmother die. So it's not even like he made the decision and now we're seeing it. Like Frank, the decision Frank, he's made. Frank came out by force. Yeah, and, by force. And then, and, then, and then did his thing. Who do you think is mentoring Frank? I think Mook is playing off on him, but I'll say this. Frank, I think Frank has had his own internal thing going on since end of the season. We spoke to him on the court that game, that then last game of last season. I remember he told us, he says, I'm going to LA to work on my body, then off the FIBA. And I think Frank already knew, like, I think the ideas were already coming in his head of what he needed to do. Right. I think regardless of the Knicks coaching staff this year, I, I do think Marcus Morris has rubbed off on him a bit. I think regardless of the staff, how he, he, he played like this in FIBA. I think he was going to play like this this season, no matter what. I think his, right. he, he got more aggressive. He learned some stuff. Um, I think Fizdale might have had something, but I can't give him full credit because he was not going to play him. If if Alfred hadn't gotten injured and Dennis hadn't had to leave the team, right. he, Frank he could be on injured. his like tenth straight DNP. You know what I mean? How many, uh, give me a time. How many hours? So uh, oh, it's funny. So the game just finished. So I'm right. that's, that's what I'm saying. You? How many hours? How many hours? Let's, let's, do, let's do a countdown. I'm torn, right? Because on Thursday we play the Nuggets, right? So that's the next game. So there's some time off. I think it's three days off actually. So. That's a lot of time off, right? So the truth is, if you're going to fire a coach, giving the new coach three days in New York, because we're at home on, on Thursday, we're, we're going to that game. So if you give, like, if it's Mike Miller, for example, who's already been with the team, right? right. Yeah, yeah. And you give Mike Miller now tonight, which is, you know, whatever, the end of the game, but this is Monday night, mm -hmm. Tuesday and Wednesday to appear so for a Wednesday. Thursday game. That actually is a lot of time for even new because he's been with the team. Bring it on. Bring it on. I'll take anything right yeah. now. I'm grabbing yeah. at straws right now. I will take it's, anything. It's bad, but that's it. You see, no, not much basketball analysis tonight, guys, because we just had to. This is just raw emotion now. Check out. I was on a podcast yesterday with the guys who I'm posting and toasting. It was really fun. I think we spoke for like two hours. It was like the freest conversation. That's, that's, Alex. that's Alex, right? Alex. Well, well it was Shrini and Andrew. So shout out to them. But, whew, I mean, it, it's, it's funny. When you listen to it, you'll see a lot of the same things we're saying now, just even more in-depth. It's just like, it's been a long time. Frizzy was hired the summer of 2018. We're about to be in 2020. And I cannot tell you specific things that work, that he's done. How right. could you be in a job in a year and a half and I don't know what you do? All right, I guess we're going to the game on, on Thursday. Uh, are, you selling those, are you selling those Saturday tickets? Uh, <laughs> Peace out, guys. All right. Peace.